Okay, so I got to talk about something here because I've been seeing this comment pop up quite a bit left and right. People are saying, you know, subdivision workflow is the correct workflow, blah, blah, yada, so forth, right? And getting kind of mad at Boolean Ingon and other uh, tutorials, right, that are out there. Uh, so let me explain something real quick. When you're working with game models, you might be creating an environment, right? I want to I point out some kind of time schedules here. Um, like Guardians of the Galaxy, when they were doing like the concepting for the, the spacecraft um, that they were going to be flying around and they were doing a whole spaceship a day just for concept, right? One, one ship a day. Probably even more than that, to be honest. But when you're doing concept, Boolean Ingon is extremely powerful, right? But even when you're doing game modeling, it's extremely powerful, but you have to approach it a little bit different subdivision is always going to be your slowest process okay there's no way around that there's not there's none so when you're tasked with something that you have to get done out on schedule you're not going to be using subdivision unless you absolutely have to or you can so i have a rule that i usually follow which is if i can do something in subdivision i will but certain things i don't want to do it in subdivision like this right here for example um I'm going to separate this real quick. Like say I'm making a cigar box. Right? There's no benefit to me uh, subdividing this thing at all. None. I don't even need half of these faces. I only need this corner. All right? So I want to prove a point here. I'm going to separate all that too. Okay? And so look. We got this setup going, right? Okay. So watch this. Um, this one and this one, I'm going to use hard ops and solidify them. Just like that. Okay. I need a Boolean object. Cube. All right. Scale it down. Place it somewhere right here. We need to line these things up, though. Basically, this is going to cut across this way. Right here. Like this. So, when you aren't when you don't have the time to do Boolean ingon work or uh, subdivision workflow, use Booleans. Trust me, okay? it's going to save you a ton of time. It's way more effective and way more efficient. Okay, I'm trying to make a square within a square. Right, that's the idea here. I'm doing a duplicate and array. You could sub D this, sure. Um, but it's going to take you a little bit of time, right? It's going to be hard to kind of balance this, but we'll get it. All right. So here we go. We need two of these. All right, so one, I must subtract this one from this side, okay? This one from this side. So what I end up with, or I should end up with, I might have screwed it up, but I have to pull these out a little. All right, so that bullying completes. This one might need to come out as well a little bit. Okay, so this is what's going on, right? This mesh, this mesh. I'm going to do a bevel on it. I'm going to keep it extremely tight so that I can work with this later. Weight the normal. So alt click sharpen with hard ops. It adds a weighted normal modifier with keep sharp. Shade auto smooth. All right. This kind of detail, while it might not be required for most things, in certain situations, you actually want this, all right? Remember, when you're doing game mod models, it's high poly first, and you worry about low poly later. Yeah. You have to get it exactly the way you want it to be. And if you can do it procedurally, non-destructively, non -destructively, 
this is it, man. All right. So this whole piece here is almost basically done. If I put the 3D cursor here in the middle real quick, create like an empty plane axis, make it larger. Um, this piece here, I can mirror across that with machine tools, all uh, control shift X or whatever it is by default, but the mirror tool and then bisect it, flip it if needed. Guess what? It goes across Y too, right? See how that works? Same happens over here. Bisect it, flip it if needed, and then mirror it across X now. Look, this is way easier, way easier. And this is just the start of this potentially, but this could be a high or low poly. It depends on your level of detail that you need on how far you're going to work this thing, right? Right now, i got a lid to do still. And if I solidify it, I work out. Might not. In this case, it's probably not going to work out, but. Oh, you know what? Yeah, well. No, wrong button. Got to reorder the solidify right there. See what I'm saying? Really simple, right? We're, we're almost done with doing the modeling part of a high poly. All we'd have to do is like the hinges and then some additional maybe booleans, things like that. Um, and we have a cigar box, guys. It's really like to knock something out this fast, it really shouldn't be a big deal. Like when I'm saying like you do simple props, it should take you like an hour. It really should. Like we still have to do cigars and the interior. The, the labels we got a lot of other stuff to do there's no reason to spend more time on this than you have to um you know we're at six minutes into this and it's one box you might have to do a dozen of these potentially and you'll have to figure out which pieces of each box you might be able to repeat on the other boxes or you have to atlas them all together etc so there's a lot of optimization things that take place as well that you have to do for game models you don't need to worry about sub d modeling everything it's going to eat you alive if you do that. And, um, you you know, this is a triple A workflow, okay? This is something that I've seen um, or I've heard at least people doing at um, Crytek, Decagon, um, the uh, Night Dive Studios. They're doing the System Shock remake. I know for a fact that um, the artist over there, the environment artist over there, he was using, I don't know if he was using box cutter and hard ops, but I know he was using... Um, Level modifier with weighted normals to do a lot of the environment and he was baking in marmoset so all this kind of stuff you you have to you know whatever is efficient and works do it that's really what the name of the game is when it comes to game models like you can't make everything a hero prop you can't make everything super super detailed it's not going to happen it's just you don't have time for that kind of stuff a lot of times so you know this you know, next step forward, like we need a low poly for this, maybe. Okay. You know, low poly, you have, you just do an overlay and mesh for the most part, right? You can literally just scale it into place. It's kind of the same way we created it originally. We could even remove those uh, booleans and maybe use the pieces under it, but something like this, right? You do your high poly first, you make your low poly pieces. Now, is that high poly going to be enough for the quality you need? That's the real question. A lot of times it isn't, even that, even um, with those little bevels on it. So, you see, like, we can delete that. We can do a solidify on it. Look. Okay. Just like we did the other piece, we can do it non-destructively. We can bevel it. I'm a chamfer in this case, but... Probably wouldn't... You probably wouldn't do anything but a chamfer at the top. Depending on how much budget you have, you might do the bottom too, but probably more like that. Just a chamfer at the top. You leave the bottom sharp. Even if it has like a somewhat visible seam, it doesn't really matter. So what ends up happening here though, now we got a low, right? Like it's it's that fast, so bag it low. There you go. And I'm gonna hide it for now, but um, there's also a remesh workflow I'm going to talk about real quick. Uh, I don't personally use it, but a lot of people are. So the remesh workflow works off of this. It's You do whatever you got to do to model, and then you use a remesh. Okay, And the remesh here, you tag it as smooth only. 
your voxel here, change it to something like 0 0.0. Try something higher at first, like 0 0.04 or whatever. Otherwise, you might crash your uh, computer. So 0 0.02, 0 0.03, whatever. In this case, 0 0.01. And you can see it's pretty high poly, right? 627,000 or 637,000 faces. Okay, so you shake this smooth now. You don't use the weighted normal no more. You get rid of it. Okay. And all you do is you um, use a simple, or excuse me, a uh, smooth corrective modifier now. You change it to only smooth. And you can change the repeat amount or the factor and balance it. You balance it with the remesh. So the two kind of play off each other. But you can do this for high polys as well. Okay. It helps if you do this when shapes might not have a little hole in them. Like you can see this smooth corrective would create these little holes. This is going to cause a ray mess when you bake a normal. So sometimes you can even make an additional kind of little mesh inside of here that's like a blocker that would stop that from shooting a ray through it. And um, that might work for you as well. So keep that in mind. Now, ideally, what's going to end up happening with something like this, uh, I'm going to save this one anyways. Uh, There's two here. I'm probably going to use these. So um, what's going to end up happening, though, is you might take this and you might, um, let's say, turn that mirror off for a second. Actually, we'll leave the mirror on. We'll just apply it. Oop. <laughs> that didn't work out, did it? Convert to a mesh. It's going to take a moment, but go into edit mode. Press L on this back one. B. Separate that selection. Okay. Now you're probably going to want to have this one and this one and this one all collapse at some point. Um, you go back because these little cigar boxes like this, what ends up happening is a lot of times they get little chips in them, little wood chips and stuff. So you could use something like clay strips. And this is high enough resolution now. I mean, it's not perfect quad mesh, maybe. Actually, this one doesn't look too bad, but um, you can get it high enough resolution that you can just come in here and start working on it. Right? Maybe use a scraper instead. But like this section might get knocked in a little bit. Right? A lot of times, both of these, I'm going to do this one as well. I'm going to turn the mirror off first. So, turn that off. So, when we can, oh, we got to remesh it too. Let's see. Smooth shade 0 0.01. This will be your high poly, right? Smooth corrective. Convert to mesh. Okay, a little bit rough maybe, but you could take these as you're sculpting. Like here, we can scrape this side, right? Maybe scrape a little bit of this side too, a little bit larger. Alt Q, switch to the next one. So in real life, what, what they do, I guess, when they make these little boxes, is they sand down the corners a little bit, obviously, right? So they're not super sharp uh, splintery boxes or whatever. So these might be kind of flush with each other. And you might have to think about that as you're modeling it. Like how can you get them to be um, really close to each other or whatever. Also, you can close up gaps and stuff with like a grab tool. Right? You might just close the gap up a little bit. So they all look a little bit unique and individual. And the best part is um, I use a couple different alphas. I use like a square alpha. So like pure square, right? And uh, also a triangle works really well. A triangle like that. You can make those in Photoshop or whatever. And then when you set these things up, clay strips here particularly, uh, area plane, uh, spacing five. Usually I turn the input samples up to like four, but uh, constant. The texture itself, you can see down here. Make sure you set this under uh, mapping, or excuse me, under alpha. No, under mapping. That was right. There you go. Extension, set it to clip, or it won't work. 
You have to keep it inside this circle when you make the alpha. That's the main thing, right? You just keep that in mind. Uh, but you can use this to do some pretty interesting like little chisel effects and stuff like that. We don't have a whole lot of resolution here, but um, you get the idea, right? You could always remesh it if you had to, right? Nothing says we can't do that. We'll just have to do the process again, which you'll lose a little bit of detail maybe, but like if I remesh, the point zero, um, go to point zero two real quick and see what happens. Okay. Point zero one. Okay, so point zero zero nine. Was it right? Yeah, it's not that much better, is it? Point zero zero. Let's try six. We'll see. It might be too much. It might not. Who knows? Blender is kind of bad on my system when it comes to sculpting like this. This is why I don't do the remesh work for a whole lot. But I'd rather quad remesh this and use a multi res. It's kind of how I prefer doing it, anyways. Yeah. Is it even doing anything? I don't look like it. Huh? Oh, maybe I have to apply it. <laughs> Let's do that. No, I didn't do much. All right, so anyways, you get the idea. You can sculpt on this kind of stuff still. It just doesn't behave like super predictably, it's just, but it's not bad. I mean, this is mostly quads, so it's not, not a big issue. Certain shapes, it might be a bigger issue if like it's curved or something, perhaps. You might have to use another smooth corrective or something, who knows? But it just it just depends really. Let's we'll see we can add like edge damage now and you know, really take our time here. I really need more polys, but you have to remember these bake to your normal map. You can always preview a normal map with the mat cap, right? So you can start to see what's happening here basically. Uh, don't group it. I don't want to group it. All right. All right. And so, depending on how much detail you need out of it, this might not be detailed enough. At this resolution, you might need more. But getting the idea now, right? Boolean Ingon workflow is not a stick in the mud as much as you think. Like, it can do some work. And it oftentimes is what people are using to get the work done. So, yeah. I love subdivision. I think it looks the best ultimately by the end of it, especially if you toss a multi-res on top. But um, it's time consuming, guys. Can't do it all the time, all right? So that's what this video is about. Just want to kind of talk about at least this little bit and hopefully you get a better understanding of like why this is such a, a good thing to do here. Because if I had duplicated this, I'd still have the original left if I needed it. You know, organize your um, your work folder or your collections. Not a big deal, right? Anyways, hope you enjoyed watching this one. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll check you out next time, all right? Take care.